Hey there, sculptors. Welcome back to the studio. Uh, I've got kind of a short video today because um, we've spent a little bit of time now kind of forming uh, or kind of posing our armatures, and we just kind of have this short job now of getting it mounted in a block. I sort of have mine temporarily mounted in a smallish block here that probably isn't going to be big enough when we get to work actually putting all that clay on. Now, I don't think we're going to use quite as much as I've got here on these small 8-inch figures, but just imagine, right, um, with the, the sort of figure that you have and the pose they have, um, once you get all that clay hanging off the metal, we don't want it to actually tip over or tip off the block. The block is going to sort of provide a nice stable platform during the sculpting process. Um, uh, it's not just for looks, you know, necessarily. And uh, one of the things that we can do as we're working with the piece is that we'll, um, we'll square maybe the pelvis or the shoulders to uh, one face of the block, and that way it will help you as you're uh, kind of working in the round, uh, make sure that you keep all of your measurements and proportions um, as accurate as possible to your model. Uh, so you see I've got my uh, sculptural sort of model here working. I'm going to do an imitation of Rodin's, one of uh, Rodin's sculptural sketches, and I've spent the whole time that I was shaping uh, the armature looking back and forth at the, uh, at the model. Now, each one of these uh, pictures I have of Rodin's piece um, is a different angle. Uh, front, side, back, I would say, are the three minimums that you probably need. Um, try to stick to, um, if you're photographing for yourself, stick to the same viewing angle. Uh, try not to get too far above or too far below. I mean, we're going to be working on a fairly small scale. We're going to be working, hopefully, at about eye level and just sort of rotating the piece. And too many photographs can be almost as distracting and unhelpful as um, too few. Uh, one photograph isn't probably good enough though, so you'll want to be um, referencing your piece from a few different angles. Uh, for an example, one of the things that I neglected at first when I first started sculpting this character out, but I came back to and made sure I really tightened up, is the general sort of curve that moves from the top of the, of the uh, character's head down through the spine and then pivots down through his left leg. There's sort of an, a nice gentle S-shaped curve that moves through the whole body and um, I probably should have really focused on that dominant curve first and then gone into bending all the bits and pieces. Uh, so learn from my mistake. Do the dominant body position and kind of curves first and then go in and make sure that each one of the pieces are sculpted correctly and bent to the, to the right place. Um, one of the things that I noticed today in class too that I want you guys to be particularly careful about is as you're kind of making the transition from shoulder to elbow or from elbow to wrist or from maybe hip to knee is you got to keep those um, sort of straight bone arrangements, um, you got to keep them straight. Uh, bones like the femur, right, that kind of large bone that goes hip to knee doesn't bend like it's made of jello, right, those are straight uh, connections. And we'll do be able to do a little bit of tweaking with the clay, but it's best to probably start working on that now. So if your piece didn't really kind of align right, or it's kind of getting a little bit wobbly, um, f uh, figure out what you have to do with your uh, pliers in order to kind of bend those uh, bend those pieces back into position. Today, uh, what we'll do is we'll get um, get a wooden block prepped. Um, the wooden blocks that you guys have are sort of smallish pine blocks, uh, probably a little bit larger surface area than what we need, but it'll give us a nice solid platform uh, for our work. If um, uh, if you wanted to sort of have this be a bit more presentable, you could just as easily sort of put a thin coat of paint on the outside. Um, I'm not going to need uh, any paint on this. I'm fine with the surface finish here. And uh, one of the other things that I noticed I'm going to need is while I was trimming up my armature, I accidentally took a little bit too much off of his right foot here. And so I'll have to add another sculptural block to the um, uh, to the wooden block. What I would like to do is make sure I get as strong of a, a connection to the block as I can. One post uh, would be reasonably strong, but if I can get this other foot roughly mounted to the block as well, uh, that'll be a nice solid platform so that I can build all the clay on top. Uh, so what I'll have to do on mine is add another little block of wood underneath the foot, which isn't too big of a deal. Uh, down the road, as you're thinking about, you know, sculptural armatures and supports, I mean, uh, what we could do with the wood block or the base is, you know, add any kind of structural support that we needed to uh, with blocks of wood first, and then bring the wire uh, to it as well. It's just kind of a nice way to sort of think about how you might change the flat surface of your sculpture platforms. Um, 
We've got lots of wood like this in the studio. We can cut it down to size and glue things up. Uh, today, um, I'll have the option available to me to be using a couple of different glues, um, either a hot glue stick if you're in a hurry, um, or since I'm not in a hurry today, I'm going to use some two-part epoxy. Uh, the, um, the hot glue is nice because it's reversible. If I add heat back to it, I can remove uh, the armature or reposition it. Uh, the epoxy is a much stronger and harder bond, uh, but once it's set, it's set, that's it. There's no going back on it. Uh, so we'll have both in the studio. I'll let you kind of decide which ones you'd like to use. And then we're also going to use a drill with a drill bit in it that is uh, sort of pre-selected to be uh, about the right diameter. If you're not sure what the diameter of the drill bit is, don't just drill into your block willy-nilly. Drill into a scrap block and then check the diameter of your drill bit. Uh, making sure that you have it's like a tight enough fit that you can get the two wires in uh, but then there's also a little bit of room for the epoxy that uh, that will uh, fill in the rest of the void what I'm going to do is drill uh, part way through this block I don't want to go straight through uh, I want to actually prevent the glue from spilling out all over the desk uh, and so I'm going to mark the drill bit um, with, uh, with a bit of tape. Essentially what I need to do is kind of determine how far down into the block I can drill before I start poking out the back side and then I'll just mark that drill bit with a bit of tape so that I know as I'm drilling into the block that I shouldn't go any deeper than that. Uh, this, this bit of tape isn't going to stop the drill bit from going any deeper. It's really just a visual guide, so you have to still be pretty mindful of what you're doing with the drill bit as you're going. Uh, but I find that that's just sort of a little visual reminder and saves me from having to do any cleanup later on in the studio. Um, the last thing uh, we could talk about is the positioning of this armature on the block itself. Um, I want to make as, as much use of the sort of block as, as a nice stabilizing platform as I can. So, you know, right smack dab in the middle might make sense for you, or if he's got a little bit more aggressive stance, sure. Uh, but then I also want to sort of square, I'm going to square the pelvis of my, uh, of my armature to one front edge of the block. Uh, that way, if I'm working at sort of a three-quarter view, uh, I'll have the point of the block facing me, or a side view, I have the side of the block facing me. These are just kind of quick visual reminders uh, for me to be able to um, sort of arrange the, per the, uh, the armature as I'm working. Another little visual cue for me. Um, last thing I'm going to do before I start drilling and, uh, and kind of actually gluing this in place is um, the blocks I've given you are, um, are sort of rough, right? Uh, I, I didn't do too much more than just cut them down on the table saw. So if yours have any rough edges or anything like that, it's much easier to deal with them now than it is after we get everything glued up. Uh, so using a bit of sandpaper to maybe rough off any rough edges. Um, I don't like to handle uh, wood that's been really rough. If you happen to have access to a vise in your home studio, uh, you can clamp it up in a vise and then sort of rough off any of those edges. Uh, be careful if you're not working with a woodworking bench vise or something, there are usually uh, sort of like really sharp knurled parts of like a, a standard bench vise and it will mark up your wooden deck pretty well. Um, not that it really matters, these don't have to look pretty. Uh, what we're going to work on here is um, is the clay itself. These sculptural stands are just um, are just really for a support. So once I'm reasonably kind of confident that I've got my character in the uh, in the spot I need, I'm just going to mark the block with uh, with a pencil mark, and I'll put my first hole into the piece. And because I had the blue tape marked, um, I didn't go all the way through the block, so that when I fill this up later on, I won't ooch glue all over the place. Uh, now I need to sort of get a little bit of spacing set up for the other block. I'm not going to glue the other block in place just yet, uh, but I would like to put a bit of a drill hole on this other one uh, so that I can get a little bit of glue to catch on that back foot. And this one's a bit of a trickier hole to drill because it's a bit of an angle. Uh, if this is stuff that you feel confident in, I'll let you work with the drill on your own. If you'd like to give me, uh, if you'd like me to give you a hand on it, I'm happy to help out in the studio. OK, 
Okay, so uh, it's not going to probably be perfectly uh, in the orientation up and down that you need it just yet. What we're really mostly kind of thinking about here is getting, um, getting your character sort of rotated into the correct position uh, because once the glue is set, there's really not much more you can do. Uh, and then if there are any other sort of trimming bits that you need to take off, now is a great time. Uh, I have a little bit too much sort of wire down here on the foot. I'm going to lift off uh, one of the windings. And then just so that the glue has something to bite onto, I am going to uh, put little notches into the aluminum wire itself. These notches sort of allow the glue to bite onto the uh, bite onto the aluminum. The wood is full of all kinds of really wonderful textures and so the glue will bite the wood no problem but I just want to make sure that I have uh, those same little, little knurling marks that we put in the hands in the uh, previous tutorial. Uh, now I'm pretty much ready to mix up my epoxy. If I was going with hot glue at this point I would just fill up uh, fill up that hole and plunge the piece down into it. The two-part epoxy is a little bit slower in that I have to mix a sort of a 50-50 mixture of these two. Uh, right now they stay liquid in their separate containers uh, but when I bring them over to mix them I push out about the same amount and for what I'm working with here I won't need more than about the size of a dime. Uh, I need to be able to fill the hole completely that I'm working with and so I put about the same amount of resin and hardener down make sure I don't contaminate those tips and then I need some sort of mixing tool in order to mix this and get it into the right places. Uh, the mixing, I want to make sure that I really mix up that epoxy well, uh, make sure that there's no sort of like pockets of resin or hardener in there and I want to make sure that now at this point I keep this stuff off my hands. Um, before they're mixed they're kind of oily, you can kind of get them wiped off on a rag or something like that but once this stuff cures and, uh, and sets, uh, there is no getting it off your hands. It is not water-based, uh, there's, there's not a solvent that you would want to put on your skin in order to get it off. So, Okay, so the first sort of uh, sculptural piece that I'm going to get installed is the main mount here with my character's left leg. And so I'm going to completely fill the drill hole that I made. And once you kind of get it in the right spot, gravity sort of pulls that in if you need to uh, convince it because it gets an air bubble down there just kind of poke a little bit of wire down into the opening to make sure that there are no air bubbles and I'm going to put the same uh, kind of fill this second opening up as well so I'm going to make sure that I coat the uh, aluminum wire on all sides by just kind of lifting it up and dropping it back in Checking to make sure that I've got a good amount of glue still ooching out everywhere. That looks good. And now I'll put a dab of glue underneath the block and make sure that those, make sure that that sticks as well. So at this point, that epoxy is still workable. I need to make sure I do any of my last minute kind of pivots or rotations. Uh, in about five minutes, five to 10 minutes, the epoxy sets and then it will cure overnight. Uh, and this epoxy cures um, to be almost hard as a rock, right? And it dries clear, so don't worry about being able to see it. So I mentioned earlier that I wanna kind of square the hips of my character to one side of the block. Uh, what that's going to allow me to do is just sort of work a little bit more intuitively with the kind of rotating of the sides. And then if I see anything goofy about the piece, now is really my last time to kind of modify those bottom bits. I'm going to make sure the block is pressed into place and I'll put a piece of tape over the block. That way it stays put while, uh, while it's setting. clamp would probably be the best way to deal with that, but at least a piece of tape will sort of keep it roughly in position while I work with it here. And uh, eventually I'll probably do some tweaking to that armature in order to get it to stand upright a bit more, but I like the, uh, the connection I'm getting. 
So I'm going to let that sit. Guys, I look forward to catching up with you in the studio and helping you cut your blocks and uh, do the final shaping of your armatures. I'll see you in the next tutorial to, uh, to get the clay added in our initial blocking steps.